please tell us how many years you have been with the district, your position, and how you feel this has prepared you for your new role as superintendent. Well, I've been in the MSAD 60 district for 20 years. I started in the early summer of 1999, so my first year was that fall. And um, so I've been here for that long. I've been participating in almost every district initiative that we've had. I've sat in on multiple committees that our school district has um, supported and embraced. And I've done a lot of curriculum work, a lot of report card work. So I feel very comfortable knowing the ins and outs of the district that way. Um, I've also worked with Berwick is with the bigger town and we have had a lot of families go through that have multiple children so we know a lot of families I know a lot of families in Berwick and um, that's just really strengthened my ability to kind of hit the ground running with this position that starts officially July 1st. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic you are entering this new position at a difficult time. Obviously no one can prepare for the future given such uncertainty. What are some of the first things you believe the district needs to prepare for, and how would you do this? First of all, I want to say that I feel like the district has done a tremendous job already with the remote learning that we've, we've had to em employ uh, very quickly. We have our technology department has done a tremendous job supporting our teachers and our staff with professional development and just rolling out really quality programming for our students. Our food service department also, we're, we have, um, we're making meals for 800 students a week and our transportation department is helping with that. So we've got a lot of really strong structures in place already that are doing such amazing work. Our staff has really risen to the occasion and, um, you know, just keeping students engaged and connected is really one of our goals and we're doing that. Our attendance in all of the buildings is, is strong and pretty consistent, so that's really good. I think when you think about the COVID and you think about moving ahead, we're really in an unknown area. We're trying to plan for the fall and for classes coming back and what that may look like. But we're also thinking about what if we're not able to come back yet and what does that look like and how do we support learning in the fall for students if we're not in school. So there's two prongs that we're taking with that planning process. Many parents and students have had difficulty in the transition to online learning. Given the fact this may continue into the fall, what is the proposal for online learning and what might we expect for changes? I think each school has done a little bit of surveying of families about the workload and the technology itself. But our plan is to put out a bigger survey to families about what has really worked and what has been more difficult or challenging. So with that information, we hope to um, really refine what we're doing for the fall or for if we need to, to do this again. The other thing is, is that our kindergarten to 11th graders are going to keep their devices over the summer. And we have a couple of different programs that the students have been using. And hopefully they'll be able to continue that uh, in the summer if they choose to. And if we do have to do some remote learning in the fall or, or at a different time throughout the year, we'll have um, the computers readily available for them. During your initial interview, you met with teachers and staff throughout the district. What are some of the concerns you heard and how do you propose to address these concerns? When, when we walked through and did our candidate day at the, at the buildings, it was really a chance for the candidates to get to know us. Um, some of the things that when we had an opportunity, when I had an opportunity to talk to different teachers and staff, one of the things that did come up as being something that they would like to keep in the forefront of our um, initiatives is social emotional learning. And we've done quite a bit of that work um, with the second step program that we've implemented for kindergarten through fifth grade students this year. And we have staff that are trained and able to, to execute those lessons. And we are looking at increasing some social work services in different buildings. But that's, also, that's been a really big piece that um, we're committed to and that the teachers and the staff really felt that we need to continue to, to move in those, those different directions. All three towns have seen growth over the last few years. This trend is likely to continue. The district had proposed renovations to North Berwick Elementary and additions to the Lebanon Elementary and Hussey School in Berwick. Given the fact that voting was pushed back, 
How do you believe this will impact the district, and what do you propose going forward? Well, when we push back the voting, that would give us less time to get all of our ducks in a row, so to speak. Um, but we are working really closely with our um, architecture firm, CHA Architectures, architects that do such a great job and are well versed in school um, planning and development. And we have a great strong staff, so we're going to be able to, even if a window is shorter for planning purposes, we have the right people in the right positions to get everything we need done and our T's crossed and our I's dotted. Our understanding is that there was a time limit on when you could apply for bonds. Will this impact funding? So the renovation bond um, that we're looking at, that's going on the budget vote in July and um, if we do get that uh, we will have we are looking at how to extend that out because you can't do some of that work when students are in session so the hope would be that there is going to be some flexibility with given given the challenges that we're having right now there will be some flexibility with that to be able to fulfill that obviously our focus changed after COVID-19 However, I'm sure you had some thoughts on changes you would like to see occur, either in the education or administration of the district. I think the biggest thing that I noticed, that I've noticed by being here for the time that I've been here, but also when I did go and visit schools, is that we're doing a lot of great things. And I've, I talked about this on the candidate night, and I've talked about this through my entry plan to come into the district. We are doing a lot of really great things, but we're not getting it out to the community like we should be able to be getting it out to the community. So really focusing on how to build a strategic, comprehensive plan to release our information. Um, it will help with, with just day-to-day -day things, but we've got a lot of people in our towns that don't have students in the school that have no way really of knowing, you know, what, what we're working on and what we're doing. And I go back to the three build, the building projects, you know, we have a lot of communities part of our community that just, you know, will read something about it, but not be part of that process all the way through. So really, that is one piece that I really would like to focus on. And that does go to my entry plan about just trying to figure out where, you know, just doing some analysis of, of where we're, we're, we can improve on that. Because every building is doing something, our central office is doing something, but we have to broaden that a little more. Is there anything you would like our viewers to know? I think what I would like our viewers to know is that, um, you know, we've worked really hard through the COVID and the remote learning and our administrative team and our teachers and our staff are working really hard f for, the, for the transition back into school and we're looking, we're very much looking forward to that and we're very much looking forward to seeing our students back in school. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.